So in three, two. Good afternoon. As chair, chair, I now call to order the April 24th, 2023 meeting of the Policy Review Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's policy review committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through Microsoft Teams Live on the BCPS website. To conduct this meeting by virtual means, all voting items this afternoon will be, con will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Walsh, Ms. Pitts, or Ms. Howie if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Pitts, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you. Ms. Harvey? Present. Thank you, Ms. Hassan? Dr. Savoy? Ms. Pumphrey? Present. Thank you. Oh, Ms. Pumphrey, uh, it appears that Ms. Hassan is not able to answer. She's not able to participate. Uh, then you do not have quorum. Um, I am sorry. I'm sorry. I was like unmuting, um, but I am here. So just wanted to to clarify that. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Pumphrey, you have a quorum. OK, thank you. Ms. Pitts, please call the roll to determine which staff members are present in this meeting. Sure. Dr. Boswell McComas. Dr. Jeffrey Holmes. Dr. Kimberly Ferguson. Present. Upside down. It'll get fixed. <laughs> That's all right. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Megan Shea. Ms. Bernadette Hunton. Present. Thank you. Ms. Oni Jala. Good afternoon, present. Thank you. Ms. Watts Hitchcock. Right. Ms. Howie. I'm here. Thank you. And Ms. Wash. Here. Thank you, that completes attendance. Thank you, Ms. Pitts. The first item on our agenda is item B1, policy 1100, communications with the public. Ms. Onijala, please proceed. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, um, board members, for this opportunity to provide some information on this updated policy. Um, policy 1100, communications with the public, has been revised to conform with the Policy Review Committee's editing conventions and outlines updated practices and procedures regarding engaging with the community and communicating with the public. Um, there's some newly added paragraphs and some minor edits, as I stated, to conform with the Policy Reviews Committee editing convention. So I'm happy to answer any questions you may have about this revised policy. But as you know, the board and the system has been um, uh, doing increased uh, work to engage with our team BCPS stakeholders and to ensure that we are reaching the community in multiple through multiple channels and through multiple tools as well. And excuse me, uh, members of the committee and staff, uh, I neglected to inform the committee that an updated version, an updated draft was posted to board docs after uh, the agenda was posted. So the most recent version, uh, there was an error that uh, staff missed, that the law office staff missed, um, that um, we have corrected in the most recent version, but the content is unchanged. Thank you very much. Is there any discussion or questions on the recommended changes to policy 1100? Oh, 
OK, if there are no corrections, policy 1100 is moved to forward for first reader as presented. Thank you, members of the committee. Uh, may Miss Onijala be uh, excused. She has no further policies today. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Boyende. OK, the next item on our agenda is item B2, policy 4100, employee conduct and responsibilities. For that, I call on Ms. Hunton and Ms. Watch Hitchcock. Good afternoon. Thank you for your time this afternoon. Policy 4100 articulates the board's standards of behavior that reflect educational goals, professionalism, and general decorum of BCPS. We have three proposed changes. Uh, the first is in response to the public work rec recommendation that we include a uh, reference and hyperlink to the corresponding superintendent's rule 4100 to make it easier to locate that text in the policy. Uh, the second is to replace um, references to he and she with they in order to conform with the policy review handbook guidance recommending the use of gender inclusive language. And the third is to insert Oxford commas or indicated to conform with the policy review committee's editing conventions. Okay, is there any, thank you. Is there any discussion on the recommended changes to policy 4100? Okay, if there are no corrections and no objections, policy 4100 is moved forward to first reader as presented. Thank you. Uh, members of the committee, be excused. She has no further policies today. Yes, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Ms. Hutton. Thank you. OK, the next item on our, on our agenda is item B3, policy 5210, grading and reporting. And for this, I call on Dr. Boswell McComas. Ms. Pumphrey, I do not see Dr. Boswell McComas. Uh, Dr. Holmes is here. Uh, Dr. Holmes, are you prepared to present? Uh, yeah, I can. Um, when we were um, asked to. I'm sorry, it seems as if she is um, logging on. So okay. I leave it to your discretion, sir. OK, we can wait for Dr. McComas. Thank you. Hi, can you see me? Ms. Howie, I have uh, Dr. Boswell McComas with me. Good afternoon, thank you. I was um, just leaving one meeting and trying to get into the next one. Thank you. So, you're welcome, thank you. So sorry, it took me a moment to get situated. 
whenever you're ready, you can get started. I will. OK, thank you. Mm. Uh, so first, thank you for the opportunity to come and talk with you today. Um, so um, error policy uh, 5210 for grading and reporting had previously uh, come to the board in its normal cycle, and we had made amendments at that time. The, um, the then policy and review committee had made the recommendation that it come back, but it was not clear on what was the ask in terms of any revisions or amendments. So that's what we're really coming forward to find any guidance. If there's any direction for us to pursue revisions or amendments, because it did pass as it currently is uh, the last time it came forward. Did I freeze? Mm, I think you're good. OK. <laughs> we can still hear you, Dr. Boswell. OK, thank you. So I think I guess I will also share. So as you are familiar, we have policy and we have rule and for grading and reporting, we also have a procedures manual and the procedures manual is really where the operational everyday um, guidance for teachers and school administrators lives in the procedures manual. So just to kind of give you a sense of sort of the three layers uh, that provide direction on 5210. So I think some of the concern that we were hearing um, was regarding more of implementation of this policy in my, in, from what I'm hearing, which I think would fall under either the rule or the policy manual. Yeah. Um, as far as um, not being consistent throughout each individual school. Mm -hmm. um, looking at the policy, I'm not seeing um anything that would address uh, the the um, consistency as far as the implementation yes so you're absolutely right the um, implementation really is what lives in the procedures manual we do have a standing grading and reporting committee uh, to take feedback every year on the procedures and to uh, develop revisions uh, to the manual as recommended you know, through the committee, and then also to identify areas for professional development. So I think to your point that the consistency of implementation is where uh, the procedures manuals and the professional development can uh, come together to support uh, greater consistency. OK, thank you. I think Ms. Harvey also has a question. Uh, yes, just briefly. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my question really is when I read the policy, um, um, I'd like to understand the differentiation between um, the standard section, standards A and standards C. Mm -hmm. OK, um, so I'm looking at it right now. So standards A grades will have consistent meaning throughout the school system and be based on grade level and course expectations as outlined in the curriculum. So that's really that grades are based on the standards and that um, students are not uh, provided assignments that, um, you know, you may get extra credit for something completely unrelated to the academic standards. And then C, the board uh, further believes grades shall be used as uh, based on a body of evidence and aligned to content standards. Again, this is the idea that um, there is a collection of ways that students can demonstrate what they know and can do against the standards. So that could be a combination of uh, individual uh, assignments. It could include an essay. It could include a project um, and that the teacher looks at that whole body of evidence to help determine a grade, uh, the, the grade for the quarter, if you will. So in that you're going to have different categories, major assignments that most of us would think of traditionally as test or unit projects. You may have minor assignments. They may be um, activities that are done in class um, to build, you know, like the component pieces of building student knowledge towards the, the standard itself. Thank you. You're welcome. And I think um, section four mentions reporting and the superintendent providing an annual report about the Im implementation of the policy. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, Requesting a report 
um, from the superintendent may clarify some of the questions that we have been receiving as far as consistency throughout schools. Um, I think so um, that may be a way to address some of the questions that we've recently received. OK, wonderful. I, we and we typically would send that in June or July. If you're um, able to send me some of the specific questions, that way I can make sure that we are fully addressing uh, any any concerns that have been raised to you from um, stakeholders. OK, sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Any other questions or discussion? OK, so um, at this point, the policy will remain unchanged and the committee's report will reflect that policy 5210 has been presented to the committee as requested. Thank you. Thank you, committee members. May Dr. Holmes and Ms. Shea be excused. They have no further policies today. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Holmes. Thank you, Ms. Shea. Uh, let's see the next and item. Our, oh, sorry. Excuse, uh, excuse me, please, committee members. There are two individuals who have called. I'm sorry, that number's gone. So my apologies. Um, next on our agenda is item B4, which is policy 5200, promotion and retention. And for that, we call on Dr. Ferguson. I am here and my camera is not working properly. I am <laughs> upside down. Sometimes <laughs> it flips and it works. So if it's not too distracting, I'll leave it on. Usually if I look at it, I'm very distracted. Um, so uh, but I will go on. Um, so uh, with policy 5200, um, it outlines the board's responsibility to establish guidelines for promotion and retention for students uh, here in Baltimore County Public Schools. Um, it, um, it establishes the guidance for promotion or retention um, as measures of student achievement for all students in their preparation for a variety of pathways. And of course, it is aligned with focus area one. Um, policy and rule 5200 promote the belief that um, Baltimore County Public Schools will be among the highest performing school system in the nation as a result of raising the bar and closing gaps and preparing every student for the future through the process of identifying and disrupting performance resulting in poten the potential for retention. Students can receive interventions to support promotion throughout their academic career, resulting in identifying their opportunities for college and career readiness. Um, as far as the, the changes, according to the policy analysis, um, the staff are recommending mon minor stylistic changes, changes to the policy to reflect more clearly the board's commitment to equitable outcomes for all students. Um, and we inserted a new section called implementing rule and placed a hyperlink to the superintendent's rule 1100 in board docs to respond to the public works recommendation 8-30. Um, and that is pretty much the changes to the policy. Any questions, comments? I'm going to, um, this is really driving me crazy. No problem, Sorry. that's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I keep looking at myself upside down. <laughs> I'm just looking again at this. Mm -hmm. Do you have a question, Ms. Harvey? Just because I'm looking at it again and mm -hmm. the comment was um, putting language in that express the, that express the commitment, these are my words, not your words, to mm -hmm. a more equitable outcome. And I'm I'm trying to figure out where that language. I guess the, the language is really in um instead of uh in uh, on line seven instead seven and eight, instead of saying uh, the Board of Education of Baltimore County um, is concerned it is committed to ensuring that all students have an opportunity to success, successfully complete the expectations at the next grade level. So that is um, that's where that was expanded. That language was expanded. OK, thank you.
Okay, and then the the hot link is just to take us directly to the superintendent's rule, correct? Yes. Okay. Any other questions on that? Okay, if there are no corrections and no objection, policy 5200 is moved forward for first reader as presented. Thank you, Dr. Ferguson. You're and welcome. Next on our agenda. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you. Next on our agenda is item B5, policy 5250, graduation requirements. Mm -hmm. Okay, just making sure I was on the right policy and I am. And Dr. Yes. Ferguson, I think you have this as well, yes. Yep, sure do. So um, policy 5250, outlines uh, the board's responsibility to establish graduation requirements for students enrolled in Baltimore County Public Schools. This policy is aligned to focus area one of the compass. compass. Um, excellence and student achievement is grounded in the effective and responsive teaching of a rigorous inclusive curriculum aligned to standards. Um, policy 5250 promotes the beliefs, precepts, and values of Baltimore County Public Schools with the focus on increased achievement for all students while preparing a variety of pathways to prepare students for college and career. The enactment of policy 5250 requires high academic standards, rigorous relevant curricula, effective and engaging instruction, and flexibility in programming and support to meet the diverse needs, aptitudes, and interests of all students necessary for students to identify their pathway towards college and career readiness. Um, as far as the changes, um, we did insert an Oxford comma where indicated to, in, to conform with the policy review committee edit editing conventions. We also in paragraph 2B standards replaced state board with Maryland State Board of Education and we added additional related board of education policies. Um, to include um, uh, policy 0100 equity. Um, and I believe that was it for 5250. Any questions? So um, policy. Sorry, I'm just checking to see if it flipped over yet. Oh, it didn't. That's okay. Policy 0100 was the only um, related policy that was added. The others were already there. there. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to clarify. Yes. Thank you. See a few more that were added. Which oh. ones were there? Um, 5100, 5120, 5130, 6500, 6600, and 8120. Oh. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify. I thought there were a few others on here, but I I was confused as to whether or not they were already they were already listed. Now I see that. Mm. Any other questions? OK, if there are no questions and no objection, policy 5250 is moved forward for first reader as presented. Thank you, Dr. Ferguson. Um, next on the agenda is item B6, which is policy 6306, student prayer and religious literature. And Dr. Ferguson, I believe that is you once again. Thank you. Yep, all thanks, students. Um, so <clears throat> for policy 6306, um, let, me, let me get my notes and my paper here. Um, it outlines the board's responsibility to establish. Uh, oh, wrong one. Sorry. 6306. OK. Alrighty. Um, it outlines the board's responsibility to neither encourage nor inhibit religion in the academic environment and incorporates two recommendations from the final report of the Policy Review Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County on the school calendar dated July 25, 2015. 
Um, the policy can be seen as an expression of our commitment to a safe and supportive environment by assuring students' rights to free expression of religion and protecting them from religious teaching or indoctrination at school. This embodies our commitment to provide a safe and supportive environment for all BCPS learners. It can also be seen as an expression of our commitment to equity by assuring students rights to free expression of religion and protecting them from religious teaching or indoctrination at school. This embodies our commitment to equity. And the enactment of this policy assures the provision of safe and equitable school environments where free expression of personal expression of personal beliefs is permitted if such expression does not disrupt learning. It also supports continuity of learning for students who are absent due to religious holidays by categorizing the absence as lawful and ensuring the students the right to make up missed work. Okay, so the policy presented for the committee uh, committee's consideration contains the following revisions on paragraph 1A and 1D in policy statement were revised for clarity and to include affirming language as it relates to religious expression. And in paragraph two, definition, the definition of religious holiday was updated to make holidays plural and to include the language that is provided by the Maryland State Department of Education in its state testing and training calendar. In paragraph 1E, policy statement in paragraphs and in paragraphs 3, a and B, compliance replaced his or her with their to conform, to conform with the policy review handbook guidance recommending the use of gender inclusive language. Any questions? Anybody have any questions? Ms. Harvey, Ms. Sun. And this was the policy where 0100 was added. Oh, that was the only one that was added. I got it mixed up. Okay, thank <laughs> you. For the day. Thank you. All right, I don't see any questions. So if there are no corrections and no objections, policy 62306 is moved forward to first reader as presented. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Members. Ferguson. May Dr. Ferguson, whatever <laughs> orientation she is, <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. Boswell McComas be excused. Yes, She's thank you very much. Done some hard work today. Right. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you, Carly. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Okay, and next on our agenda is item B7, policy 0600, anti-discrimination, which is a new policy. And for that, we call on Ms. Howie. Thank you, committee members. You have before you an entirely brand spanking new policy 0600. Um, the lion's share of the work was done by Ms. Wash, so I'm gonna let her get into the specifics. Just by way of introduction, uh, in the 2022 legislative session, uh, the General Assembly passed an Anti-Discrimination Act that created Title 26, Subtitle 7 of the Education Article, and also um, uh, created some uncodified language. But essentially what the statute required was that each local board of education have an anti-discrimination policy. And there were specific requirements in the anti-discrimination policy that we've reflected in what you have before you today. And again, Ms. Wash will get into the specifics. What I want to point out to you as well is that there's a requirement for specific language in the student handbook, student behavior handbook, and that the language we believe is much more expansive than the anti-discrimination statutes we already have on the books. But as you see from the, uh, the policy analysis, our sister LEAs have taken um, interesting uh, uh, 
approaches, none of which I believe is is uh, incorrect, nor would I say that uh, about our sister jurisdictions. Uh, but there are uh, about four jurisdictions that have specifically referenced this statute. There are other jurisdictions that believe that their current law, their current uh, uh, policies are already enough to reflect what is required by the statute. But as I indicated, we've taken a different tack. So I will ask Ms. Wash, who um, worked very hard on this policy, to explain. Ms. Wash? Thank you, Ms. Howie, members of the committee. Uh, as Ms. Howie said, it, this legislation required very specific mandates. And so what we did was we mirrored what the language of the legislation was in policy 0600. Uh, and I just want to note that the legislation also permits the withholding of state funding if the non-discrimination requirements of this legislation are violated. <clears throat> Consequently, as a result of the legislative mandate, as Ms. Howie stated, policy 0600 was drafted and requires re prohibits the following actions. It prohibits discrimination against any person because of an individual's race, ethnicity, color, religion, sex, age, national origin, marital status, sexual orientation, gender identity, or disability. And these are in our definition section as the protected classes. And any person uh, in, this set, in this policy includes a current student, a, protect, a prospective student, or the parent or guardian of the student, which has status in that protected class. Policy 0600 also prohibits the following, the refusal to enroll a prospective student, expelling a current student, or withholding privileges from any of these categories of individuals because of their status in the protected classes. Thirdly, Policy 0600 prohibits disciplining, invoking a penalty against, or take, taking any other retaliatory action against a student or parent or guardian of a student who files a complaint alleging that the school discriminated against the student. And you'll see that the policy in Section 3C provides for disciplinary action should any of this occur. <clears throat> Finally, Policy 0600 provides notice of a complaint mediation and appeal process at the state superintendent level for violations of the legislation uh, against anti-discrimination. Does anyone have any questions? <clears throat> Excuse me. Ms. Pumphrey, you're muted. Sorry. <laughs> In case you didn't read my lips, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> I have no questions. Okay, thank you, Ms. Harvey. If there are no corrections and no objections, policy 0600 is moved forward for first reader as presented. Thank you, members of the committee, and thank you again, Ms. Wash, for all your hard work mm. on this project. Thank you, Ms. Sally. Mm. Okay, um, and next on our agenda is item C, staff updates, also for Ms. Howie. Yes, thank you, members of the committee. Uh, you have before you uh, policy 8341. There is a minor change that staff is recommending. Uh, this is a policy concerning your hearing examiners and qualifications to be a hearing examiner. This policy mirrors 6203 of the education article and requires that statute as well as your policy require that individuals be licensed 
by the highest court in the state, which used to be called the Court of Appeals, is now the Supreme Court of Maryland. Up until uh, January 2023, uh, we had a, um, a Court of Appeals, which was our highest court. It's been renamed the Supreme Court. Uh, so now only New York State has a Court of Appeals as its highest court. Um, I checked 6203. Actually, the language in 6203 um, of the education article was changed without, because the, the name of the highest court has changed. We simply wanted to make sure uh, that the committee was aware that we would be making that change. Uh, it's going to be presented simply as an information item and the, the, uh, the policy will then be placed on the website with the notation that was edited on that date. And the, the editing would be changing Court of Appeals to Supreme Court of Maryland. I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, for example, why I would prefer it to be called the Court of Appeals, but no one asked me. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did. We did vote on it, and only twenty-five percent of uh, of Marylanders wanted uh, the the name unchanged. So, and that change is on page one, line seventeen. And that is the only change, correct? Yes, ma'am. That's the only place that it appears. And we did a search of um, of our whole policy manual. This is the only place that. Uh, the term Court of Appeals uh, appears. Okay. Okay. Any questions? I'm not on mute. Okay. If there are no questions, policy 8341 is moved forward to the board for information. Thank you, uh, committee members. Thank you. Next on our agenda is item E, which is Committee General Good and Welfare. The floor is now open to members of the committee to discuss issues of concern. I must emphasize that this is not the time to conduct business as there as there has not been notice provided as requi required, excuse me, by the Open Meetings Act. Anyone have anything? I have no issues of concern right now. Thank you, Ms. Harvey. We only have Ms. Hassan and. Okay. It looks like everyone. The next meeting of the Policy Review Committee is scheduled for Monday, May 8th, 2023 at 4.30 p.m. Because there is no further business, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank members. you. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah.